Hi, this is Kathy Tombaugh of kathytombaugh.com. Um, I'm a parent coach and work with families who are concerned about their teens or young adults. Today, I'm really excited to have Joanna Conti join me today in an interview to talk about the work that she's doing that is so needed. So I'm thrilled to introduce Joanna. Let me tell you a little bit about her. As her daughter cycled in and out of multiple alcoholism treatment programs, Joanna Conti became very frustrated by the lack of success rate data available to help families identify the best facilities. A scientist, reform politician, and serial entrepreneur, Joanna started Vista Research Group in 2015 to help addiction treatment programs measure and continuously improve the effectiveness of the treatment they provided. As the number of treatment programs measuring their post-treatment success rates has grown, Joanna was finally able to achieve her original objective this spring when she and her daughter, Karina Monison, launched an online directory of rehabs with the best proven success rates at www.conqueraddiction.org. All right, well, welcome, Joanna. I'm really glad you're here. We're so excited to hear about the work that you're doing, and um, I know it's gonna help families. It's really amazing. I mean, it's something that's just so needed. Um, so can you share briefly your background and what brought you to research treatment, addiction treatment? Well, I have a really odd background. I'm a chemical engineer by training. I have a master's in international business. Um, I've, I've worked in corporate America, and then I've spent decades running different, starting and running different companies from the food industry to international nonprofits to help orphans in um, and street children in Africa and Asia to turning around a real estate company. And one of the things that I did along the way was I taught myself how to program and I started a software company, which I ran for five years. And so all of that kind of, oh, and another thing is I ran for Congress of all things and for county executive in uh, Anne Arundel County, Maryland. So I have an incredibly diverse background. But what really brought my interest to, in addiction treatment to the fore was um, my experiences with my daughter. Mm -hmm. we, we actually have four kids, but as a teenager and young adult, she ended up um, getting a very severe uh, alcoholism addiction and over the course of um, five or six years she was in and out of treatment multiple times and I kept finding myself in the situation where we're in the ER she's got a blood alcohol level of 0.43 or 0.46 sometimes she was airlifted there um, you know we it, it was horrendous and and each time I was forced to make what's really a life and death decision about where to send her for treatment on the basis of blind luck. At one time, somebody had mentioned at a picnic six months before, I should check out this treatment center. And I happened to remember it when I needed to find treatment yet again for her. And, and each time I would call the admissions counselors at addiction treatment centers, and they were always so nice and so wonderful. Mm -hmm. And I would say, and what is your success rate? And they'd say, trust me, we're one of the best, you know? Yeah. The wonderful thing is that we always found really effective treatment. And as a result, my daughter has now been sober for seven and a half years. She's completely turned her life around. She's married. She has a wonderful job. She has uh, two children. In fact, she just left this morning after spending a month here with her newborn and her almost six-year-old and her husband. So we have been incredibly blessed because of the wonderful treatment that she found. Mm -hmm. But it shouldn't have relied on blind luck. There should be a way that families and parents looking for effective treatment are able to identify those treatment centers that meet their needs, that have the best success rates. So when the worst was behind us, 
I decided I, I was running a marketing agency at the time and I decided as a labor of love that I wanted to create a way for the families coming behind us to find the treatment centers with the best outcomes. Mm -hmm. And so as a side project, I created a website called Conquer Addiction where parents could look for treatment and they could put in you know, the location and what type of treatment they needed and any other criteria, what insurance company, what have you. And the treatment centers with the best proven outcomes would show up at the top of your search. So I created this in 2015 and was then horrified to find that there were only five treatment centers in the entire US who were monitoring their results and were willing to share the results with us. Mm -hmm. And so this was the, the fall of 2015. And I thought, I can't start to promote a website that recommends Karen and four of the foundation recovery centers. Mm -hmm. It just doesn't make sense. But I didn't want to completely give up. And so what I did was I went to one of the addiction treatment conferences and started talking with a bunch of treatment center owners. And I said, I don't get it why aren't you tracking your outcomes? And enough of them said they wanted to, it was a next year's strategic plan, they didn't have a clue how to do it, that I thought there's a business opportunity here. And because of my background, I had spent five years programming and running software companies. I was a researcher, I was comfortable on the political stage, all of those things kind of came together and I was able to dig into the academic research and develop uh, some uh, software and um, monitoring tools in a cost effective way to follow up with patients after treatment. And I launched that through Vista Research Group um, and we have now um, uh, monitored over 36,000 patients during treatment and about 10,000 patients after treatment since I launched that in March of 2016. That's amazing. And you're absolutely right. I mean, I think so often parents are just totally overwhelmed. If you go online, there's all these different numbers. You have no idea what's good, what's not good. Um, you're hearing you know, you're basing it maybe on a recommendation from a friend, but then again, everyone's different situation is different. So what, what works for one child is not necessarily going to work for somebody else. So wow. it is very difficult. So this is amazing that you're doing this. And again, it's so needed. Um, very, very much. So the goal of your research, it sounds like, is to share uh, treatment outcomes. Um, but can you talk a little bit more about that and what you want your consumers to be able to do, what you want the treatment programs to be able to do with this research? Sure. The basic problem is addiction treatment is a form of health care. It should be treated mm -hmm. like any other type of health care. And if you think about it, you think about the progress that's been made, say, in cancer treatment over the last couple of decades. What we've done is we have experimented with different drugs and different treatments and so forth. And then we've measured what's worked. And then we publish those results. And then you, they, you, you, the, 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 um, the experts look at what's worked and they modify accordingly and they try another experiment. And that is how we've dramatically improved uh, recovery from cancer for a lot of different types of cancer. But addiction treatment has never been handled like that. Historically, a lot of addiction treatment centers have um, been started by somebody who was in recovery themselves with all the best intentions. They really want to help a lot of other patients coming behind us and they know what worked for them and that's what they want to do. But there's no reason addiction treatment should be treated like a poor stepchild of the rest of healthcare. We can measure outcomes and we can use that data to figure out what works for different types of patients and to continually improve. And so uh, that's really, I, I really have two goals for what we're doing. 
The one is that I really want to provide effective research that helps each individual treatment center measure their outcomes and continually improve. And then separately, I want to use that data to help families and anyone searching for treatment to find the treatment that is most likely to be effective for their loved one. Okay. Okay. Sounds great. And again, it's, it's, <laughs> yeah, it's just, uh, you know, I think that's one of the biggest bur burdens, honestly, for parents and family members of just figuring out where to go and trying to work through that maze of, the treatment industry and, and trying to figure out the best it, it's exhausting i mean it really is it is and the problem is parents are thrown into this world that they never had any intention of joining right they don't have any idea where to turn and yet suddenly something that matters more to them than life itself the life of their children is at stake and they're incredibly stressed and oftentimes just this whole process has resulted in a lot of disagreements among husbands and wives and family members and and plus you're arguing of course with the the um, adult child or the adolescent themselves about what to do and you are forced to make a critical decision with, with no data. So one of the other things that I did early on, and, and Kathy, um, I really appreciated your help with this, is we created an ebook back in 2015 where I interviewed a lot of other parents and just put together the resources that I wished I knew when I had started down this road with Karina. Mm -hmm. And so if someone were looking for that, it's called worried that your child might have a problem with drugs or alcohol. They can go to the Conquer Addiction website and they can download that. And it's, I, I forget, something like a 30 page ebook with interviews and just a lot of information about how to tell if your child's having problems and how to choose the best treatment center and so forth. So. Um, you know, it was just very frustrating to be thrown into this world and not know where to turn. And because of the stigma about addiction, your next door neighbor might have had a similar experience with their own child, but you probably won't know it because people don't talk about it. And so that's one of the other things that there's a lot of, um, movement in the industry to try and reduce the stigma around addiction mm -hmm. because it is a disease and it can be treated and there's a lot of really good treatment programs out there and we just have to connect the patients who need it with the treatment that's going to work for them mm -hmm. great points absolutely no that's good and good to know about your your free you know your ebook definitely we'll give that link out um Okay, so how does the treatment program and participants become involved in your in your research? So, uh, you know, can you talk a little bit about that process? And then, are these abstinence only programs, or um, medication assisted treatment part of it, or harm reduction? Anything of those, you know, anything along those lines, part that is being tested right now in your initial research. Sure. Sure. Well, the treatment programs pay VISTA Research Group to do the research. We do two different types of research. We monitor the patients while they're in treatment and report the results in real time to their therapist so that their therapist can identify things like this patient isn't progressing as well as possible or what are the different mental disorders that are contributing to this patient's addiction? Are they dealing with high levels of trauma or um, anxiety? anxiety or depression? Are they suicidal? Um, are they self-harming? We monitor all of that. We get a, a baseline at intake and then we monitor during that time that they're in treatment and we provide the results in real time to the clinicians so they can identify those patients that um, 
maybe made some, you know, good improvement at the beginning and then plateaued and aren't continuing to progress as well. Mm -hmm. And also it can help them identify patients who are disengaged from treatment and at higher risk of leaving, um, you know, just walking out the door uh, before treatment is, before the recommended treatment is over. So we do that type of research. And then we also then will follow up with patients after treatment confidentially, one month, six months, and 12 months later, to see how those patients are doing. Have they been able to stay abstinent or uh, to meet their own drug and alcohol treatment goals if they're in harm reduction or MAT programs? Um, and then we report those results just in aggregate back to the treatment centers. So one of the things that's been really frustrating to me is We've worked really hard to keep our costs down. We, we knew going in that this had to be very academically focused and useful and easy to use research, and it needed to be inexpensive. And so for, a, let's say, a mid-sized treatment center that is treating, let's say, 50 patients at a time, our total program with both types of research will be no more than about 40,000 a year. And a lot of these treatment centers are spending hundreds of thousands, if not millions a year on marketing. And so it's really not a huge expense for treatment centers to do. But what we found is that the early adopters, the ones who started with us early on or who are still are joining us, um, they tend to be the treatment centers that are really mission driven. Their entire goal is we want to help as many patients recover as possible. And we want to do the best possible job helping them recover and measuring what works and using those results to learn and continually improve the treatment that we provide for future patients. And so that tends to be the group of mostly smaller treatment centers who are investing in doing our research. Um, what's been frustrating to me is that it is still less than 1% of all addiction treatment centers, mm -hmm. even those that rely predominantly on commercial insurance and that theoretically families have some choice on which one to attend. It's still a very small percentage of the addiction treatment world that is investing in this type of research and proving what their outcomes are. Mm -hmm. That is frustrating, I can, I can see. So it sounds like the, the um, treatment program pays a nominal fee, which, which you're right. I mean, compared to marketing and other expenses, it's low, very low, and that should be a pro that should be really the number one priority of these treatment programs yeah. to find out how their clients are doing. And then you work with the clients at different, like I think you said, one month, six months, and twelve months. Reach out to them, okay, and see how they're doing. And um, so that, yeah, it's just such important, you know, information that's so needed. And it, it is amazing that there's not more of this going on. So I, that's why I'm, it's so exciting, really, that you're doing this. I mean, and I'm hoping that more programs, I mean, again, I think it all comes a lot of times from the consumer asking about, you know, are you on this list? Have you been, you know, are you part of this research program? So, okay. Exactly, and that's one thing I would really encourage parents or anyone that is looking for treatment. When you're talking to these admission counselors, um, you know, say, and, and by the way, I, I did you bring the circle, the, the whole story full circle, I was very excited this June that we finally have reached a critical mass of treatment centers that are monitoring their outcomes. And in conjunction with my daughter, who has joined me on the, the board mm -hmm. of Conquer Addiction, Great. we have relaunched Conquer Addiction with over 50 treatment centers on it, hopefully growing rapidly over time. And there is now a place that families or anyone searching for treatment can go and for free see a directory, uh, do a search by, by state or by 
uh, age of the patient or by treatment type or by insurance company or I really want a 12-step program or I really don't want a 12-step program, all of that sort of things. You can enter into your search criteria and those treatment centers with the best proven outcomes according to an independent panel of judges and they don't have to be using VISTA research group. They can be using any outcomes researcher or even doing it internally as long as they comply with the rules that these addiction treatment experts have set, then they can be part of, uh, of Conquer Addiction Search. And then you'll find the treatment centers that meet your criteria and those with the best proven outcomes will show up at mm -hmm. the top of the list. And so I'm really excited that we're finally bringing things full circle and providing this information back to the parents because that's really where it all started for me. That was my original objective. And, and what I would really hope is that um, parents who are searching for treatment or anyone searching for treatment will use Conquer Addiction and if you end up having to talk to a couple of different treatment centers that aren't on Conquer Addiction, as you very well may need to, um, I would encourage you to say, hey, I don't get it. Why aren't you tracking your outcomes? Why aren't you on Conquer Addiction? You know, I don't get it. And if they hear that from a couple of different parents, maybe a few of whom decide to go elsewhere because they're not doing it, that's what's going to change the industry overall. Mm -hmm. And once we can measure treatment effectiveness, we can improve treatment effectiveness. Because right now you have all these people that really care. And frankly, they all believe in their heart of hearts that they're providing truly effective treatment. I mean, there's a few bad apples out there, but most treatment center owners are in it for all the right reasons. Most people working in this field care deeply about their patients. But without the data to measure how effective you are, you simply don't know. And what we found is that even among the treatment centers that are investing in doing this research because they truly believe it's going to show that they're particularly effective, we see a huge variation in treatment success rates. Huge, hmm. like a factor of two. Wow, interesting. Yeah, that's interesting. Okay, so yeah, no, I agree. I mean, I think, you know, that was one of my main, you know, that's one of the panic modes that you get into the minute you find out your child has this issue now what, you know, and who's going to help me figure it out? And it's, yeah. Okay. So this is great. Um, well, let, and you know what? I, I just realized you also asked about medication assisted treatment. And I, and I wanted to talk about that for a minute sure. because um, this is getting research to compare the relative effectiveness of different types of research or different types of treatment from abstinence-based to harm reduction to medication-assisted treatment is one of my primary goals moving forward. There's a lot of data that has shown that as long as someone is taking the medication, their death rates go down and they, they do much better. But my concern is that research also shows that 30 to 70% of patients will stop taking their medication in the first month alone. And we know that a lot of those are then at higher risk of overdose, that they'll go back to using the, the bags of heroin they were using before and their body isn't used to it anymore. And so what has truly concerned me is while there's been a lot of research that shows that while people are taking the medication, I have not seen any comprehensive research that follows up 
with the whole spectrum of patients, including the patients who stop taking the research or stop taking their medication. And so we have developed, as Vista Research Group, we've developed comparable research for abstinence versus medication assisted treatment programs. The challenge has been that abstinence based treatment programs have been willing to invest in doing the research, and we haven't gotten a similar level of interest from medication assisted treatment programs. I think they're seeing that there, you know, a lot of patients are coming in, they're being told that, you know, this is the best possible treatment. And for some people, it absolutely is. But for other people, it probably isn't. And if we could do similar level of research for medication assisted treatment as for abstinence based treatment, it is foreseeable that in the next couple of years, we would have the data that would say, all right, you have a 25 year old um, woman who has been um, injecting heroin for six months. She is more likely to be alive and thriving a year from now if she follows this type of treatment or that type of treatment. That's where we need to get to. And we could get to it in a, in a, a very short period of time mm -hmm. if we could do similar research to directly compare. And right now, you know, my, my company is entirely self-funded. I've, I've put every penny I had in my retirement income and everything else into creating Vista Research Group and worked without pay for four and a half years. <laughs> You know, I'm finally at the point where I can start to pay myself, uh, which is which is good because my husband was about to rebel. But uh, <laughs> but you know, we, we either need medication assisted treatment programs to hear from from patients that they want to see this type of type of data too, mm -hmm. or we need grant funding or somebody that's willing to fund similar research and. Um, um, I really, we're working on a number of different avenues to try and get there, but, um, you know, it, it's just, a, it, it's a very concerning that we don't have complete research on the long-term effectiveness of medication-assisted treatment. Mm -hmm. Now, that's a good point, and one that I think, you know, for myself, for sure, I never really thought of it that way. I mean, I, we've heard the research that it works for most people if you stay but you're right if you stay on the medication it's just if when you nobody, go off then what happens yeah nobody is following up with let's just say half the patients who leave in the first month right nobody is following up and the other thing that along those lines i've talked to different medication assisted treatment programs some of them are able to retain a much higher percentage of patients in their treatment than others well, that will factor into the effectiveness of the, of the different treatment programs, mm -hmm. right? You know, if you can keep a lot more patients in treatment for whatever reason, because of the peer support or because of, you know, you, you provide better therapy or, or whatever, then you will have much better success rates than one down the street that is just kind of following a, a different kind of model. And so we, it's every bit as important that we measure the relative effectiveness of different medication-assisted treatment programs as we do for abstinence-based programs. Mm -hmm. No, good point. That's an excellent point. And what, you know, I think we need research on every angle of this. So that's great. Um, so what are some things that you've discovered in your research around the outcomes and also some of those key ingredients to long-term recovery? So you're talking to some of these clients who were 12 months later, you know, they're still doing well. What are you seeing that they're doing that might be different from some of the people that after a month they've relapsed? Um, right. Well, there are five different factors that we have found have been very influential in how successful people are in remaining um, drug and alcohol free long term. The most important factor is totally under the control of the patient, and that is do they complete the recommended treatment? Because what we find is that those that complete the recommended treatment will have about twice the success rate of those who 
for whatever reason, leave treatment early and say, I got this. I know I can stay sober. The fact is they probably can't. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, I, I wanted to mention, this is a notoriously difficult population to follow up with post-treatment. Um, we make 10 to 15 attempts to contact the patients each time. We pay them a little bit in Starbucks or Target gift cards to take this their, their follow-up surveys. And we also will reach out to locator people, you know, a mom or a spouse mm -hmm. who the patient has given us permission to contact in case their cell phone number changes or you know for whatever reason we can't reach them and so we work really hard and we are typically able to reach 50 to 60 percent of the patients but um it takes it, it's really difficult to do that um and i and i I, I'm sorry, I want to get back to your other question, to no, your okay. question, but I, I, did, to too. I did want to make the point that um, there are treatment centers out there who will tell you they have 60, 70, 80, 90. I've had one treatment center only tell me a 98% success rate. And I just thought, in what alternate universe mm -hmm. are you Right? Yeah. <laughs> that you think we're going to believe that. Yeah. And I wanted to talk about that because what those treatment centers, if they're doing any research at all, but let's give them the benefit of the doubt and say that is based on some sort of research, is they are reaching a small percentage of their patients and they're assuming that those patients they reach are representative of the whole. So they're saying, okay, we reach 25% of our patients and 80% of those were doing well. So therefore we have an 80% success rate. That's simply not true. Mm -hmm. We have learned, you know, if, if we looked at our own data that way, we'd have a 77% success rate, but that's not truth. This is a chronic disease. It's very difficult to recover. Um, our averages show that about 36% of patients will be reachable and abstinent at six months and one year post-treatment. That doesn't mean there's not hope. I mean, there's, there's tremendous hope. There's millions of patients and millions of people who've recovered from addiction, including my daughter and, and I believe your daughter. Uh, right, so I mean, there's always hope. Sometimes it takes more than one treatment episode um, and over an extend, more extended period of time. But um, I wanted to point out that if somebody tells you a success rate that sounds a bit unbelievable, take it with a grain of salt. Because if, if, you, if we can't reach those patients with all that that we're doing to reach them, there's typically a reason. And it's typically that they've relapsed mm -hmm. or they don't want to admit that they're using again. This is a difficult disease, but I'm sorry to jump around. I'm going to get back. I just get no, that's so great. That's important. Oh, yeah, no, that's a very important point. I want to jump back to uh, your question about what are the um, the most effective factors. The first is do they successfully complete treatment. The second is how effective is that treatment center? Because as I said, we saw a dramatic variation in effectiveness among the highly respected treatment programs that we have done the research with. The third factor is how long does the patient stay in treatment? And what we found is that for patients who are in treatment for less than 20 days, only 22% of those patients were reachable and uh, claimed to be abstinent six months later. So 22% if they stayed in treatment for less than 20 days and 45%, more than double, if they were in treatment 90 or more days. So the longer they can stay in treatment, and that doesn't mean it has to be in residential treatment for all of that time. You know, you can go through a progression of treatment. You can go to, um, you know, residential treatment and then follow up with a PHP or an IOP program, or you can do entirely IOP if you have a motivated patient. They can, they can succeed fine with IOP treatment that's building a strong peer network and, and things like that. Um, but the longer they can stay in treatment, the more likely that they're going to be doing well six months or a year down the, down the road. 
The fourth factor we found is really impactful is what drug they're addicted to. We have higher success rates for patients who are in treatment for alcohol addiction than we do for any of the other drugs. And the, the drugs that we have the worst success rates for are heroin and cocaine. And the rest of the drugs are somewhere in between there. So um, I think that's just telling you it's harder to recover from a heroin addiction than it is from an alcohol addiction. That doesn't mean it can't be done. It's done every day, thank goodness. Right. Um, but it's just harder. You, you should be aware of that. And then the last thing, and it ties into how long they're in treatment. The last thing that has a big impact we see on whether patients are successful long-term is the actions those patients take after they leave treatment to remain abstinent. And the two most important factors that we found are if they can go to recovery support meetings regularly throughout at least their first month, that dramatically improves their, um, their success staying abstinent. The second is, and this may be even more important, if they can live in a sober living environment for at least a month post-treatment, this also has a really big impact on their long-term success rates. Mm. So those are the two most important factors, I think. And, and that doesn't mean they have to go to AA. There's a lot of different types of recovery support meetings that can be very effective. They have to find the one that works right for them. But if they can be in a network where they're, they're, they're developing friendships, they're developing fun activities mm -hmm. in a sober environment, um, and if they can be living in an environment that is monitoring and forcing them to focus on the activities they need to do to stay abstinent while they still are getting their feet under them, they're back kind of sort of in the real world and they have to get used to a new way of operating and being in those sort of environments we found makes a dramatic difference. Mm. That's fascinating. And it's so great to have it concrete that you're just laying it right out. So, and I totally agree with everything. I mean, that was our experience too. I felt like my daughter's treatment was longer and she did do the sober living. And she said, if I had gone to, she had one program for five weeks. And she said, if I had just come home after that, I would have relapsed. I would have started using again because I wasn't ready. It wasn't enough. And so and I do, unfortunately, I do see parents so often sending parents for, you know, their kids for 30 days. Um, sometimes the kids, you know, and sometimes they do fine, but then sometimes I'll see instances of kids coming home and living at home. And then they're just isolated because there's no, you know, their friends are all using, so they can't be around them. Um, they don't have new friends. I mean, it's just tragic, you know, so it's really good to know. I agree, totally agree that I think the sober living and I think some people say, oh, you know, there's too much risk. I, you know, our sober living experience with my daughter was great. I mean, the, you, know, you just have to do your homework and find one that's, you know, very proactive and on top of things. So, you know, this work is just amazing, Joanne. I just, you know, I can't believe how much effort and time. I'm so glad I, you know, reached out to you. We connected again and um, that we're able to share what you're doing because I think it's so important and so needed. So I'm hoping that parents can take a look at what you're doing, get some ideas. I just actually sent it to one parent already, your website. <laughs> so I'm like, check this out because he was trying to figure out what to do. Um, so, all right. So where can parent, people, parents, fam you know, any family member learn more about your work? Um, where would we send them? Okay. Well, a couple of different things. First of all, uh, if you are looking for treatment or you're looking for advice, you know, with that ebook, or you're just looking for just um, general information and to check out what's out there, please go to our nonprofit website, Conquer Addiction. And it's conquer-addiction.org. And there you'll see the ability to search for treatment centers. You'll also see the winners of our Excellence in Treatment Awards, which we're doing to on an annual basis to try and recognize those treatment centers with the best outcomes. 
Uh, so that's the first place I would suggest people go is conquer addiction, conquer-addiction.org. And then the second thing is if they're interested in our type of research studies and what we're finding, we do publish our results so that the entire industry can learn from it. When we published these results last um, December, it was the results of monitoring where we were at that point, 23,000 patients during treatment and um, several thousand post-treatment. This was the first research published on uh, independent uh, addic on addiction treatment outcomes research that was published on a wide variety of people since the last federally funded addiction treatment research in 1994. That's unbelievable. 26, 25 years. And, you know, this was the first research that was published on following up with a wide variety of patients at a wide variety of different treatment centers. This year, when we publish the results, it's going to be based on more like, I think, um, 6,500 patients. And we'll be publishing that in the next couple of months. But if you ever want to see the results of our research and the proof of what makes the biggest difference in patients um, staying sober long term, if you go to Vista Research Group's website, you can see all of the different things we're publishing. Um, and or you could get a copy of this by going to 2009 outcomes or 2019 outcomes.com. So um, those are the two places. Go to our websites, conquer-addiction.org or Vista Research Group, which is also with dashes.com for our research results. Amazing. Now, this is great work. I'm so excited that you, um, that we were able to connect, like I said, and um, I really want to thank you. I appreciate the time and effort that, you know, you've devoted to this. And it's so fun to see parents who have gone through it with their kids. And then they, you know, because of that experience, and they're going on and doing work. And what you're doing is just incredible. It really is. It's just so, well, it is. It's so needed. And it's just, uh, I'm very happy to share this. And I hope that more parents can learn about the work. And again, like I said, ask treatment centers, you know, you need to be, you know, monitoring your outcomes, you know, so um, we all can have a better idea of what's working and what's not. So, yeah. Thank well, to you. all the parents out there, my heart is with you. Um, good luck. It, it Really, there is hope at the end of the tunnel. Uh, all I can say is I just remember... I remember the months and years where I was terrified to answer the phone. Yeah. I thought I was going to hear that my daughter had died and, mm -hmm. you know, to just spend a month with her now. And I mean, it, it, you know, and see how, how wonderful mom she is and everything. I mean, there really is hope people do recover from mm -hmm. addiction. And I just wish everyone out there who's dealing with this horrible disease. I, I really hope and pray that, all turns well for you. Mm. Thank you for that. And I'm sure parents are going to appreciate that. And I will have, for those listening, I will have the links below on this YouTube, um, on the YouTube channel, but I'll also have it on my blog link too. So you can find, find it there and go and check out what Joanne is doing. Again, thank you so much for taking time to share with us and also for what you're doing to help families. It really, it's incredible. It really is. So well, thank Kathy, you. thank you for what you're doing also. I, I've gone to your Facebook page and, and you're making a tremendous difference and have for many, many years. So thank you so much for everything you do too. Okay. All right. Well, with that, we'll say goodbye and um, I'll, we'll see you next time. Bye. All right. Thank you, Kathy.